Hi, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today's video is brought to you by request from a few of you. You wanted to see what browns I have in my collection for coloring animals, so I'm going to do a bunny today. And these are the browns that I have that are non-quinacridones. The quinacridones are synthetic colors, so they don't granulate, and these do granulate, at least some of them do granulate. The raw sienna is one that is the equivalent of quin gold, but the quinacridone gold does not granulate. So I recommend the ones that do, the ones that are more natural colors because they're going to look a little more like fur, that sort of thing. I'm going to have that little chart on my blog if you want to see it again because I know it flew by quickly. I'm starting with the yellow ochre and I'm just going to paint the whole bunny with a flat wash, which means I've filled my brush so that it has the same amount of pigment to water ratio in the entire brush. When you're trying to do a flat wash and you want it really even, if you have water inside the fat part of the brush and the paint is only on the tip, you're going to end up, if you lay that brush down, squishing water out into your paint. And that's what causes blooms. So if you ever had all of a sudden, you have this, this area that's not blending, it's not flat because it's got a big splooge of water in it, that's why. So you just want to fill your brush the same way as I'm doing here. I've got some good uh, hefty quantity of pigment of the raw umber. And I'm going to do the drop shadow, or the cast shadow, should I say, underneath of the rabbit. And I'm careful not to touch it because the paint on the rabbit is still wet. But I'm going to stretch it out because shadows underneath of things tend to just kind of have points on either side. But I want to pull the color out some. So I've rinsed my brush and taken off the worst of the water so that I can kind of suck up the extra paint. It's a thirsty brush. It's pulling color out and then adding more water cleaned my brush again and that little tiny fade, that little tiny sweet edit that I made uh, took a little longer to wash the brush out than that split second. But anyway, I'm softening out the color at the bottom so that it blends out. And if you end up with a bloom because you're adding water to it, then just go over it again and pull that color around. You can control the amount of water in your brush. If you're using an aqua brush, it's a little harder to control that, but on a regular brush, it's not so bad. So I'm using the silver brushes from um, the Silver Brush Company, the Black Velvet line, my favorite. And here I'm using a little bit of um, Quinacridone Rose, which is a color many of you have because you have that set of six essentials from Daniel Smith. And I like that as a, a nice little pink color. And I'm using the Thirsty Brush idea again to take out some of the pink in the bottom part of the bunny's ears. And then I added a, another little dollop of paint there so that the the rose would be, a little, or the little poppy that he's holding, would be a little bit denser in color. So now I'm going to take the burnt sienna and I'm going to add a drop shadow here. <laughs> I keep saying drop shadow, not sure why I keep doing that. Adding a shadow on the left side and then around the bottom. Now that's pretty hefty paint I've got going on there. So I wanna take my raw sienna Again, this is loaded really heavily in the brush, so the whole brush is full of that raw sienna paint, not with water, so that I'm not going to be pushing water out on there. And by the way, I did dry this really well before I started putting on that dark color and this layer. If you did that while it was damp, you could end up having all kinds of messes, so you don't want to do that while it's damp. So I'm trying to soften the edges so that as they start drying, I don't have hard spots. And I'm just keeping an eyeball on the face because there's some spots on there that aren't working out exactly as I wanted them to. So I was going to have to do some repair. I knew that. But I'm letting it dry back a little bit because I wanted it to settle in. Sometimes it'll settle in better than you think and other times it'll settle in worse. So I just I keep, my, keep one eye on that while I'm painting another area just to see what's going on and what I'm going to have to go back and fix. Now here I touched the wet area above so I had to kind of soften that out. I took my thirsty brush again, cleaned that brush out and I'm just gonna try to pull some color around and see if I can smooth some of that out because I didn't do a super great job of it when I put the color down. But with watercolor you can repair some of that. It's just a matter of knowing your technique. Now down here I got a little bit of blooming. I must have had more water in that brush than I thought I did so I was trying to add more dark to that the bunny's body so it will match the darkness on the head and be about the same level of intensity of color. 
So I'm just dabbing some of that extra dark color in there. And then I wanted the ears to be very dark on the tips and then lighten up as they got toward the top. So I'm using the same combination of colors and blending that color upward. Now, if you're doing blend, uh, making your own colors, if you're mixing your own colors from your red, yellow, and blue, you wanna mix up a really good quantity of all these browns at the same time. You wanna mix up you know, the equivalents of each one of these colors. That's one reason why if you may want, if there's colors you use all the time, if you do a lot of animals, you may wanna buy a couple of browns so that you have them available to yourself. If you do a lot of flowers, you may wanna have a couple flower colors that are available to you in the tube straight out of it. So here, I'm not really mixing colors together. I'm trying to use them straight up just so you can see what they uh, look like. But for the most part, you can mix any one of these but you want to mix up enough to, to do the whole thing. Now here I decided I was really going to go for it and I was going to add a lot of shadow because it was just, it was too harsh of a change. And I went back in, dried my brush out, and I'm using a thirsty brush to pull off paint from that edge so I soften it. And again, I'm, I'm trying to move color around. This is a dry brush where I'm just pushing color around because I had a little bit of a puddle of, of paint and I had the availability, since it's still wet and, and stuff, I could move it around. If you wait until it's damp, it's harder to repair. But as long as it was good and wet, which, you know, this stayed really wet on this Arches Rough Paper, then I was still able to do a little bit of fixing of it. So there's our little bunny. Hey, sunshine. Just left it very simple on the card because I thought that would be a really great way to feature all that hard work that I put into the painting. And it looks just, I, I think Stacey Eccola should do children's books. I think that would be so sweet with her style of drawing. I think they're so cute. So here's a couple more videos. If you wanna see more on the Daniel Smith paints, I'm hoping that you have gotten some and tried them out because they're a whole lot of fun. They're really good quality. And the one on the right links you to the playlist that has all of my Daniel Smith stuff from Ellen Hudson. I'm doing weekly watercolor tips over there so you can check out that playlist and get lots more education about watercolor. Be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.